I actually signed a contract to be the next head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, but at the last second, I changed my mind and came back. <laughs> so, you're welcome. Welcome, to welcome back, DT. Thank you. And you, welcome back to the second draft. Yeah. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Woohoo! We are, we are post-Super Bowl. Yeah. It feels like a distant memory already, doesn't it? It does. It's strange. Yeah. But- yeah. So we're only three days. Oh my God! It's only been three days. I know. Feels like an eternity. Yeah, that's gonna be a long off season. Super Bowl is over. Signing day is now complete. Um, we have the combine and the draft to look forward to. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've got a lot to talk about on the second yeah. draft about the draft. But uh, until then, let's talk about the Super Bowl. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Eagles, you guys, we were right. We were not only right, we made it happen. Yeah, we willed it into existence. You're welcome, Philly fans. I'm going to pause the video right here. I'm going to cut back to last week's video where we actually decided we were going to make it happen for America. Wait, if we all pick the Eagles, does that collective, like choice go up to the universe and like create some sort of you know i've had this theory <clears throat> this entire season that the three of us have made some shit happen we called some stuff way before it actually happened so I so should know. we just pick the eagles let's as a eagles. like collective let's Hell test yeah. this power. all right i i take it back okay let's test this power right. we've been given and i even decided because i was like i was feeling defeatist mm-hmm. and you guys inspired me to will it into existence and so we did you're welcome, Philly. So it yeah. was. Stop climbing poles, you weirdos. Yeah, and trashing hotel uh, and lighting awnings. Sh- like lighting stuff on fire. And eating horse shit off the street. That doesn't make any damn sense uh, to me at that's all. Philly. Y'all are weird out there. Forget you have a it. great city, though. It's I love Chinatown. me some Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> some Liberty Bell. It's like they had a they had a checklist that they had to go through, like the, the ride <laughs> back in the day, like, all right. Uh, it's like a scavenger flip, hunt. Flip a police yeah. car. Check. Yeah. yeah. Climb the climb the lights. Check. It was it was Super Street Bowl win stick. bingo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if you got the bingo, you get like a little mini Liberty Bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a race to to the nearest tar- tattoo parlor to get Super Bowl champion Eagles tattooed on their ass. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know what what Patriots fan contributed to our correct prediction by going out and getting like and one for the thumb or something on his <laughs> on, <laughs> on his, his leg <laughs> on his thumb uh, I don't know I hope there's a lot I do too that's funny oh praise god the Patriots didn't win though yeah that was uh, a good game it was there's, honestly you know, one the, of the... not good defense the defense left a lot to be desired that's not true the Eagles defense they put it out there. They, they did a good job. They played job. well, but it wasn't like there wasn't a defensive game. It was sure. an offensive game. Uh, yeah, and that's still... why it was so entertaining to watch. Mm-hmm. Like, oh man, love that. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, honestly, one of the better Super Bowls in recent memory. I For had a, sure, I had a blast the yeah. entire day. And me and Alex were sitting with a buddy of ours who's a Patriots fan, and he's going uh... back and forth trading jabs with us, and then just like looking into his beer, and not making eye contact, and because uh, he was Jared. so haughty, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, he was not happy at the end of the night. He was a good sport, though. He's a good kid. Good. Jerry, we love yeah. you, man. Yeah, you're pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't... He he had his... He had tempered enthusiasm when they went up. Um, and and I, I understand that fully. I was right there uh, two years ago when, when Denver was in the Super Bowl, and there was some ups and downs there. Yeah. Same kind of concept. You're just holding your like, breath. You don't... You, you can't... You can, when you're a true fan, you cannot put all your cards on the table and go crazy. Otherwise, the, the crushing defeat yes. afterwards just ruins yeah. you for, for it's, weeks. It's like bringing... So, I, I feel like it's almost like talking about a no-hitter when a no-hitter's in progress. Yeah. FYI, if you don't watch baseball, but you go to a baseball game, don't mention a no-hitter oh, in the middle it. of it. That's bad. Yeah. Can't do it's that. Terrible. It's, yeah, not, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. So... It was, so yeah, I mean, I don't think he's superstitious, and I'm not either. But at the same time, you don't say any of those things just in case. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't want that in your psyche. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a good. Uh, I love. I mean, Nick Foles went to the school down south, and I don't even care. That's but, uh, but, University of Arizona. For yeah. Those of you who aren't aware of Correct. our geographic location. Yeah, we're in Phoenix. I went to ASU, Arizona State University. Um. And I, I don't even care. People were like, yeah, well, you're excited. Like, uh, you have a U of A quarterback one. I'm like, dude, I don't even care because the Patriots lost. <laughs> and that brings me joy. And also, Nick Foles' story, like, 
he went from backup yeah. to going to the Super Bowl. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and he's the only quarterback to ever throw and catch, catch. a pass oh, touchdown. and the, yeah. a, a, t- a touchdown in the Super Bowl, yeah. which is freaking awesome. Yeah. yeah, I just love that we it's saw so cool. we saw some crazy trick plays. Yeah, even in the the first and second quarters of those games, and uh, you know some of them collapsed. Like I think the Patriots came out right out of the gates and and threw some weird counter reverse pass that just yeah. completely collapsed because the Eagles defense, like DT was saying, just was on it. They were, yeah. Uh, and and then the Eagles came back and flipped it on them and scored. And that was incredible. I love seeing that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's that's an interesting play. I think it might work against the look that we're seeing against right now against you. Mm-hmm. Let's try it out in the end zone. Because those little end around things, the naked boot, the the Y pop, those like the the weird tight end out plays, yeah. they tend to work in the in the red zone because people are relatively predictable. Right. But when you throw those trick plays, they either collapse hard or they win. Right. And that's like games. And, and in this situation, the Eagles capitalized. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we all saw that Tom Brady also can't catch a pass. <laughs> um, yeah. and I, you know, I don't know if it's because of his hand being jacked up or if it's just because he's a quarterback and obviously not a receiver. So um, I think I think he just thought it was in the bag, you know, like, yeah. A lot of the times, they, they used to tell us that, and you know, we were talking about baseball before. They, were, they used to tell us that in baseball in, in Little League is that, you know, we miss 90% of the times we swing because we're looking out in the outfield for where the ball is going to go mm-hmm. instead, yeah, of instead of focusing at on the, the bat connecting with the ball. Eye yeah. on the ball is the, the first thing that you, you, you learn. And yeah. as a receiver, the, the thing is watch the ball into your hands. Watch the ball into your hands. Right. And... He's a quarterback. He doesn't hear that all the time. He's naturally athletic, obviously. Yeah, but, for sure. You know, he doesn't do it day after day after day. He yeah. catches balls, but they're usually thrown to him uh, at like a nice lob 10 mile an hour. Right. <laughs> I'm sure they practice that play a lot slower than they actually tried to execute it on the field. Yeah. So, yeah. And I will say the Philly defense did exactly what I was saying that they sh- they needed to do. Is stop them from scoring touchdowns and win the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But to- Tom Brady, if you go on the outside, he he jiggles and he moves and and you got it. Like if you come straight for him, he doesn't like pressure up the middle at all. And you could tell that that defense was prepared to pressure him up the middle. And he got fr- you could tell a couple points in the game he got really frustrated. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. he was fuming on the sidelines. Um, and that offensive line didn't wasn't a match for that Philly defense. Yeah. And if you look, yeah. if you look at, if you disregard the sideline, and you just look at what happened. The defensive line for the Eagles as the, the the play progressed. Tom Brady's comfortable in the pocket because you he, he you have to be as an elite quarterback. You have to rely on your offensive line. Mm-hmm. Right. But over time, he started to get a little frisky in there because they were getting closer and closer and closer. It's like right. the D line was figuring out those gaps and that's what that's that chess match on the in the trenches that you that you see with like rock solid o-line rock solid d-line they have to figure out where where is my opening where yeah what what kind of move did i do six plays back that might work in this specific situation yeah and let me let me try to exploit that and that's when the big plays happen like yeah that uh, recovery yeah and 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 the eagles did a like with the exception of one kind of glaring mistake that I saw, which thankfully didn't, you know, end up screwing them. Um, you know, they managed the game clock really well. Yeah. And they managed their timeouts really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they gave New England a little extra breathing room with two minutes left, which kind of was like a little bit of a concern. Um, but beyond that, I mean. Yeah, it was looking pretty shaky when the Eagles left that much time on the clock. Yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, God, this is bad. And honestly, that that last Hail Mary that Tom Brady threw could have gone either way because that was a perfect, like, Aaron Mm Rodgers-esque bullet point laser precision Hail Mary that could have gone easily into Gronkowski's arms. Yeah. And that could have just changed the outcome of the game. So Yeah, I think think that's four to five inches of difference because Gronk is Mm -hmm. huge and he can just stick his hands up, but those... Those uh, 
the the secondary knew like I need to get up right now. This is this is for the ship. Come up and and bat the ball down. And those guys all have probably like a three foot vertical at least. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so the, okay, that's that's a, an exaggeration, but still they they've got it's they've big. got hops. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they they can go up on on Rob Gronkowski, and that was the the, the decision maker. It mm-hmm. came down to can can I jump higher than this other person? Because yeah. you're right, Tom Brady threw a perfect ball. Yeah. And I think if if Gronk were faster, some I think the game too, because there were a lot of plays where he would have gotten more yards after catch. Sure. If he were faster, he's he's big, but he's not yeah. fast. He's not, but I don't fault team. Gronk for anything that he did. No, I no. I mean, I think he played a games. great game. Yeah. Um, I think just, I mean, I, I just, his abilities, he's big. Mm-hmm. That's his, that's his major asset yeah, is he's, he's big, he's a tight but he's end. not he's on a fast. Receiver. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's, 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 he's kind of, I mean, he's pretty nimble for, for a big guy, but mm-hmm. he's just not quick. Right. He's, he's definitely like typecast tight end. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Think about like a movie perspective he's typecast as a tight end he's perfect for that role like yeah he he's a, he can block when he needs to but he can also be the the yac like a receiver yeah and when he also needs to two touchdowns i'm sure the guy is fully winded and i don't blame him for not having the speed like your your first comparison will be to you know one of the receivers your your x or your y or, or mm-hmm. your slot receiver and and he's obviously not going to be as quick as them because they get a breather on run plays, yeah. or they get a they get a quick breather because they're getting pulled out and somebody's getting subbed in. Gronk is probably in there. Yeah, he played when he's, when he's not injured. Yeah, yeah. When he's yeah. not injured, he is in the game. He's blocking. He's running. He's running routes and yeah. carrying all that weight. I can't fault him for that. Yeah. Um, uh, how much do you think the injury, the early Patriots injury? Played into Brandon Cooks. Yeah, uh, I think it was hugely. I, th- I think it had a huge role in it. I also think the benching of Malcolm Butler was. A, that um, was what a mistake. I feel like that was a huge mistake, and I don't understand why Belichick did that. Nobody understands it yet. They haven't really, and they probably never will. No. give us an official reason as to why. There's rumors, but no, losing Brandon Cooks and, and Malcolm Butler, uh, I, I think absolutely tipped the scales in Philly's favor. I don't absolutely. get why you just put Malcolm Butler in on special teams. I don't get it. Uh, he was all set to go like hours before the game, and yeah. Bill was like, "Yeah, we're not starting you're you. Not you're not playing." Yeah, and but that just made no sense to me at all. And for somebody like Malcolm Butler, who is a competitor, having to watch, you know, Nick Foles just, just Guts. bomb on them, just yeah, you know, I yeah, I don't understand. It's the freaking Super Bowl. You just want to win. Yeah, yeah. You, deal with you it put afterwards. you put the guy yeah. in that you know is the best, the best guy for the job. Yeah. It's dumb. Their defense would have been more fleshed out. Yep. They uh, missed that. I don't. I don't get it. I mean, I'm I'm fine with it, but from a strategy standpoint, it makes no sense. Yeah. They could have capitalized. I mean, Foles throws accurately, but he throws rainbows. Yes, he They're, does. He throws those big arcs, and they they land exactly where they need to. But that's why we saw an interception with, from the Patriots early in the right. game. Because it was a tip drill, and I mean, it was a little lucky, I'll admit that. It kind of just fell into the hands of the Patriots secondary, but still. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, why not have somebody back there that can easily make that happen? Yeah, and you, yeah, I mean, if you can force those more frequently, why not? Yeah. 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 But the Eagles, I mean, the Eagles played one hell of a game. That was beautiful. Run game was, came out. Yeah. Oh, like crap. Jay Ajayi, Clement, what Clement a freaking was, brilliant yeah. pickup this season. It was, oh, my God. It was really funny seeing Garrett Blunt get that touchdown, too. So good. Yeah. I love He's won two Super Bowls. So is Chris, in the last so two is years. Chris Long. I know. Those two guys Crazy. were both Patriots last season, and they won a Super Bowl. Now they went to Philadelphia, and they beat the Patriots for yet another Super Bowl win. And James Harrison and his, his sassy, <laughs> sore person lost the Super Bowl. All right, if James Harrison comes after you, I'm not getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, I have words with James Harrison. He doesn't scare me. He doesn't scare me one bit. Yeah. Yeah, size does not scare me. The eye, like the eye contact, that doesn't scare me either. Yeah. I don't care. I don't I don't intimidate. Paige will fight a mother. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably <laughs> lose, but I'll do it anyways. Yeah. 
Probably not. But the run game. I'm a pacifist, so I don't know how that uh, works. Out. But the run game. But the, the run, run game, game for the Eagles. The run game. We talked. We talked earlier in the season. Obviously, we, we've been singing the Saints' praises, and we've been we we talked about Jacksonville's uh, versatility in the backfield. Mm-hmm. I think the Eagles showed up out of nowhere and were like, "Yeah, we've got the same thing going on." Clement, yeah. uh, Blunt, Ajayi. Jay Ajayi was was running downfield. He was not having anything. Nobody get in my way because I will destroy you. I love seeing that out of out of backs that you don't really know. Kind of like uh, I th- he reminds me of how Ingram runs. Like could yeah. be a power back, could be a speed back, right in the middle. Mm-hmm. And and the coaches knew what to do with that. And they were they were running. I think one of the things that that stands out to me is that there were no plays that I was like that was a terrible call. Yeah. Uh, no draw plays. Yay. Yeah, no draw plays. <laughs> yeah. The Eagles have run a up. couple of draw plays this season. Yeah, they have. Really I mean, hence the comment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. It, I, I think that was a nearly perfectly coached game. I mean, yes. I, we need to talk about how great Doug uh, Peterson's play calling was, and he made a statement after the Super Bowl about how aggressive play calling wins Super Bowls. That fourth down call, Brad. So my husband, Brad, looked at me and he was like. Oh man, I don't know if I would do this. And I looked at him and I was like, it's the Super Bowl. Do it. It's the Super Bowl. You yeah. want to know you left everything on that field. If you lose, because cause they weren't expect. I don't think they, the Patriots were expecting it. And it was a gutsy call. And it right. could have gone either way. We're but talking I about would, the Philly special? Yeah. But, that was actually Nick Foles' call. But he, I would, he made the oh, call on the good field. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. On fourth down. Why not? Not to take it away from, from Doug Peterson. because He didn't have a long ways to go. Yeah. Yeah, but Nick Foles in the huddle called that trick play. Freaking a! I mean, they clearly practiced it a lot. They had it in their their repertoire, ready to go. He's smart. He's um, got a good football mind. Yeah. yeah, I I was I was hella impressed by Nick Foles. Yeah. Seriously. It's the first person to say hella since two thousand one. So. Uh, <laughs> there was the only the only call that that stood out to me was I think it was late in the fourth quarter and there was there wasn't much time left and it was Philly was uh, on fourth down I said they should punt because yeah. you know even if pa- the Patriots got the ball and they drove down the field because we know how good they are with that two minute drill mm-hmm. yeah they um, are if if they crushed it went down and scored Philly would still have plenty of time to come back and and mount some sort of comeback from that yeah uh, you and I, went I back said you should punt it. Yeah, you and I went back and forth on that. that I remember mm-hmm. that vividly. I was like, yeah, just, just F and go for it. And you're yeah. like, they should punt. And Jerry, our, our Patriots friend, fan, was also like, they should punt it. Well, I was like, of course. I would go for it. And he wanted they, the chance. They pulled Foles off the field and it looked like they were going to bring in a special team. So they're going to punt it. And mm-hmm. they kind of deliberate a little bit. And then they kind of walk Foles back out. And I'm like, okay, let's go win a Super right. Bowl. Yeah. 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 And they, 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 got, they had the they gumption did. and it didn't work out. I mm-hmm. think... I think if if the play went the other way, we'd be looking at that play right now as oh yeah as the deciding factor because it's uh, it, it was in in my like in, in my view like yeah they did the the like they laid it all on the table and they succeeded and that's awesome and it's a very triumphant moment yeah but it could have gone so poorly and yeah. then the Patriots yeah. would have no doubt capitalized on that can can we can we also talk about this this I like. Uh, so I watched the Super Bowl. I wanted to hang out with these guys, but I'm going to Scotland tomorrow. So, um, oh, you're going to Scotland? You haven't you haven't mentioned that before. No, not at all. <laughs> guys, I'm super excited. I'm excited for all the shit you you're going to bring us back. I am. Home, yeah. I will, if for sure. Um, Give me well, a, a super rad newsy boy cap. Okay. I'll wear it every day. All right. All right. Yeah. I think I can pull it off. Sweet. Um, but so so I watched it at home, mm-hmm. um, and. I was laughing maniacally. <laughs> like Brad looked at me and he was like, "That is a laugh that is hysterical, but I've never heard it before." Nice. And we've been together for like five years. Um, when Goskowski missed a freaking extra point, I was rolling. Didn't he miss two? Yes. It was. I was going to say. I think it was the third one. Uh, yeah. There were three missed total in the game. I was like. Not extra points, but but place yeah. kicks. Like, yeah, I was I was I was elated. I had Goskowski as my kicker in fantasy, and I was just like, <laughs> "Dude, thank you for saving that shit for the postseason." <laughs> like, yeah. well, okay, so one so was I'm not stuck. a great snap. No. There was one that was that was well, the the snap was bad, but the the 
place hold the holding. We were saying the ball was lopsided. That's not a bad hold for the ball. It, it, was, it was Gaskowski. Yeah, that was the one that went wide left. Yeah, that was all Steve. So uh, not Scott Norwood with the wide right. So mm. I I gotta say, all four years in high school, I, I long snapped, and and before that too, when I was playing like I want to be a long snapper when I, I was, grow up. I was long snapping. It's a good way to. Um, like if you were like I know plenty of people during high school were like oh you could go on to the next level if you're good at this like if you if you want to you could probably yeah. walk on oh my god long snappers are whew. well they're also the so, first guy to get cut at the end of the season so yeah mm-hmm. especially if they suck exactly <laughs> right you've got <laughs> like, one job and, you have that up and you're it's like kickers you got so one job and if I yeah. if I were to and I've, let's I've let's so Alex finish. that being go ahead said and finish Alex we'll stop interrupting <laughs> you now you can finish your story. That being said, Go ahead, uh, Go ahead. now that I've yours. established now that I, that I've established my ethos and my, my credibility for this argument, <laughs> I would I would say uh, <laughs> I, when you're in the pro when you're in the pro level, you you can't botch that. You're you're expected to be picture perfect every single time. Even in high school, if I had a bad snap and I had I had my fair share, uh, they get on you about it because you know there's somebody else on the team that could probably do it. It's not that difficult of a job, but it. It's uh, it's something that it's expected precision every time. Yeah, and yeah. so you cannot have the long snapper yips. That there, that is not existing. <laughs> that's not a thing. Yeah. You if if you throw the ball at your at your holder's crotch instead of out in front of where they're gonna hold it, you've made a mistake. And so I blame Gostowski's miskick on the snapper in that situation. I do too. Because they're used to they're used to this. They're used to the holder going. But he's doing because it, he's doing it should, this. those hands should not move. And that, right. that ball should have right well, in those hands, and then they drop it. And yeah, you can tell it's, when it's the holder's fault. Mm-hmm. It should be it should be a matter of inches. Because that's like laces not even six laces inches. Should be, it should be three or four inches of the, the holder bringing the ball, putting it on, down, and if he needs to, spinning it so the laces aren't facing the kicker. Mm-hmm. Right. And and in, and when he has to do when he has to do this and come cover his crotch and grab the ball and then fumble for it with it for a second to do yeah. this. Sure, Gostowski, as as a professional kicker, should be able to put it through the, these giant uprights, but he can't be blamed be, because of his regular routine of I know what it takes to kick the ball through the uprights exactly like I do every time. Yeah, he should not have to take the millisecond to adjust and kick that through the uprights because if he shanks it, he, it's going to look ridiculous. Sure. And if he kicks it like he normally does, there's still a likelihood that it goes in. Yeah, because. Normally, if he kicks it just like he just did, it's going to go through the uprights. I mean, they function as a unit, mm-hmm. sure, and and absolutely. when one is faltering, it the trickle down effect it like it amplifies exponentially. Yeah, I feel like in those situations, what you really need is a, a special team of guys. I, I, wait, <laughs> do, is, is there a thing called special teams in football? I feel like maybe I've heard so, that term. I think before. I just but, coined but it. But in term. a pregame, oh, God, should, you're so. I'm gonna start. Smart. A, I'm gonna start a hashtag a, on Twitter and see if it catches on. <laughs> in a, a special team. In 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 pregame though, I, my my coach wouldn't let me leave the the pregame warmups without snapping the ball like 50 times at mm-hmm. least, minimum 50 times. It's just whoop, whoop, whoop. if I was if there was no kicker, that's fine. I'm just me and the holder again. It's muscle it memory. Yeah, because I mean, that's, that's what muscle it is. memory. Exactly. Yeah, it's a matter of it's like six yards. If if that you're you're, you know, in the pros, it's it's roughly the same, maybe five yards. Right. No, it's a it's more like six. It's 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 a little bit further. That's why the the add the distance when you're gonna decide how long the field goal is. Right. Yeah. But but it's um, like bowling. I mean, people who are really good at bowling, their muscles. They memorize that movement and the and the placement and I mean you watch somebody bowling and yeah. like their their footwork and then their steps are choreographed very precisely mm-hmm. and you can tell like I mean I I'm decent at bowling for a chick um, and it's all about I mean it's it's literally it's the same thing every time and mm-hmm. anytime you you have a, even a slight variation. It throws the whole thing off. Sure. Well, it's yeah. just, I mean, muscle memory is applicable to a lot of different sports. There, well, there's like, especially things, yeah. like just for, just for like baseball, for instance. Yeah, I've had oh, for sure. Where, like, yeah. oh, you played Little League Baseball, didn't you? Because of the way I throw a ball. And like, I've seen that with other people too. It's like, oh, I can tell that you haven't really like thrown a football before. You've never thrown a baseball before. But like, I've thrown a football and people are like, oh, you played baseball, didn't you? And it's because of the way my arm moved when I threw it. 
and some people recognize that muscle muscle memory because they've seen it a hundred yeah. times. Yeah, I can so, tell people who play golf who also play tennis. Yeah, because of the way they swing um, their golf club. Yeah, I throw a football and people are like you played Nintendo, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's there's a reason when I play when I play flag football I play defense. Oh yeah, okay. Because it's more fun. I, I think it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, you get to but hit like yeah. when when you're when you're when your offensive line is a chick named Sherry and she looks like a refrigerator. She and is I'm, the offensive line. <laughs> she is. I'm not kidding you. This chick was like she looked like a refrigerator, like a refrigerator. Wow, what's she doing these days? She single. <laughs> I think she's married with like six kids. I'm so sorry, Sherry, if you're watching this. No, she's Sherry, not. Sherry, no, she now goes by Icebox. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we've talked all the way through the Super Bowl. Let's take halftime. Yeah, and then we'll come back. We'll talk aftermath. All the situations that have arisen from the Super Bowl and all the Some ridiculous weird crap that's, garbage. Yeah, all the stuff that's happening in the league right now. So cool. Halftime starts. Halftime. Welcome back. That was halftime. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We're here to talk about football. Football. Let's do it. it. So So weird coaching stuff. DT had a pretty interesting take on the whole. The Josh McDaniels. Yeah. 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 Hit us. So Josh McDaniels was in line to become the next head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. He was pretty much all up to the point of actually putting pen to paper. He'd already hired a coaching staff there in Indy right now. And just as he was like pretty much about to get on the plane and go to Indy, he was like, actually guys, I'm good. <laughs> so my theory <laughs> is, and if you want to get angry about this, feel free to leave comments down below because I will respond to every single one. We can talk this out all day. My theory is, and you can call it a hot take if you want to call it a hot I like, take. I like it, yeah, it's a hot take. I, I was like, this is kind of conspiratorial. I don't think McDaniels was actually fully intent on screwing over India. I think what happened was he was ready to go, and Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, still a little sore about Indy blowing the whistle on Deflate Gate, were like, hey, Josh, hey, do you want a little bit more money? Do you want to <laughs> do you want to come and be the head coach of the Patriots when Bill's done instead of? going and dealing with that crackhead Ursay. Josh was like <laughs> crackhead. <laughs> Josh was like Yeah. I could do that. Okay. <laughs> and he was like, sorry, Jim. You're gonna have to do that line of coke that you've got lined up on that mirror by yourself because I'm my kids are here, they're in school, I've got a job lined up here. Billy is going to be done in probably five years, and I'm going to be the head coach of the second most winningest football team in history, and that's all she wrote. And and the most winningest, thank you, Philly, the most winningest football team in history is still the Pittsburgh Steelers. Which yeah. I'm not entirely happy to be a part I'm of as fine, a Cardinals fan. I'm fine about. But... It's yeah. funny, when, when we Cardinal started talking about this, I was like, uh, so are other teams shopping around for Josh McDaniels? Because uh, d- does he deserve, should he, does he deserve a head coaching spot? I think sure, but Did does, he, deserve he, the first does time? he need to be head coach? I don't think so. I didn't like him in Denver. I didn't like him as a head coach there. I yeah, want to I see... Mean- I want to see Josh McDaniels as, a, as an offensive coordinator. I think he belongs in that place. I agree. I think yeah. McDaniels is an excellent coordinator. Yeah. I think we've already seen, and maybe he's had that extra time in the oven, and maybe he'll surprise everybody somewhere down the line, but I do feel like Josh McDaniels is one of those guys who's just, no offense to him, better suited as being a coordinator instead of being a head coach. Yeah. And, and there's, there's no shame in that at and all. And we get to so. see in the upcoming season how, I mean, a fair number of coordinators actually turn out as head coaches. Oh, I mean, yeah. Matt Patricia, now we get to see how Matt Patricia turns out as Steve head coach. Steve Wilkes was the offensive co- or defensive coordinator for the, the Panthers. Now he's going to be the head coach of the, the Arizona Cardinals. So a lot of coordinators getting promotions. And yeah. A lot of them are shot in the dark. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's what and we've talked about the NFL as a business before, and I think there's some validity to what we're saying with these moves that are being taken immediately mm-hmm. after the Super Bowl. I mean, if you look at uh, any any business um, from kind of a organizational standpoint, 
you have your directors and above them you have your CEO, your COO, or sure, CFO, right. or whoever. But below them, you have the people that are making the moves that are doing the thing day to day. Right. And you need your operational head. You need your yep. person that's going to say, I know what needs to happen in these positions. Um, I, knew, I know what they need to look like. Not necessarily how they need to be run. But yeah. I know what they need to look like. And if they, you're not doing that, I'm going to come and talk to you. And we're going to address this issue. Yeah. Um, but those directors, they're the ones that are actually making the moves. They're the ones that are facilitating all of the things that need to happen and uh, for the NFL uh, that's that one what that's what do we need to have happen on the field mm -hmm. for an offensive coordinator they don't necessarily uh, need to be in that CEO position right they might be better suited to being a director right for their entire tenure the entire tenure of your, their career yeah that might be the best place for them because they're yeah. good at that they're, they're they they know better than the CEO sometimes what needs to happen sure and and they are not afraid to tell the ceo i know better than you let me make this happen and that's what that's where you see big plays happen in the nfl that's where you yeah. see the offensive coordinator say no or or further than that the person below them the the quarterback say let me take let me take hold of this situation because i know what's happening on the field i've seen it i feel i've, I've literally felt it i, I feel right. what's going on Right. A la like Ben Roethlisberger versus Todd Haley. Yes. Every time you know, like Todd Haley. You can say it. He's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and, ben okay. Roethlis Fire. and Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, whatever you want to say about Ben and the past and whatever, the guy's a phenomenal quarterback. Um, he has a pocket presence that's undeniable. Um, but the guy also knows football mm -hmm. really, really well. And he reads defenses crazy well. Yeah. Um, and when he calls plays versus when Todd Haley calls plays, I, I'm always much more confident in watching Ben Roethlisberger call plays. Yeah. I'd be shocked if he didn't, right. when he retired, if he didn't end up taking up a, a coaching position somewhere. Roethlisberger? Yeah. Because so, he has a football mind. Yeah, I, I, think he'll, I think he'll retire and he won't. I don't think he'll coach, but... I think he might coach like high school. I can see sure, him doing yeah. like a Peyton yeah. Manning thing and taking a bunch of time off from the league and maybe evaluating something down the line. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were talking earlier, and uh, Alex, you actually had a very interesting and I thought a brilliant uh, simile for the situation regarding uh, off, like offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators and head coaches, and I was comparing them to film directors versus directors of cinematography. I don't want to steal your thunder, but to summarize, what I really loved about it was the fact that you get your head coach, who is the director, who is working individually with the players and working on the overall scheme and trying to get the whole creative basis for the play going, and then you've got your director of photography, who would be your coordinator, who is placing everything and setting the scheme and setting the, the shot, if you will, and right. those two have to work in tandem, and I thought that was just yeah, as brilliant as your, your CEO and, and director allegory. So Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think of I think I think what I mentioned before was that it was uh, was uh, Zack Snyder was the the one that stuck out to me. Cinematography wise, he he mm -hmm. understands film. He gets yeah. it. Yeah. Those those intros to I think it was Batman versus Superman where you get the the kind of like really quick insight into the the Batman origin story. Um, mm -hmm. Brilliant, like really well done cinematography wise, but it's just it, it played off like Bond credits because he didn't yeah. know the value of what he was playing off. Yeah, he's he's not a director. He's a he's he's not a head coach. He's a, he's an offensive coordinator. Right. You know, he belongs in the cinematography seat. Yep. And and I think when you take uh, Josh McDaniels, who who knows offenses, he knows he knows what needs to happen. He he realized that as the offensive coordinator of the Patriots, as the the, the, the the brain behind what the Patriots were going to do in the Super Bowl, he realized, I need to create some kind of trick plays. How am I going to do that against the Eagles? And he came out of nowhere in the first quarter even, was throwing counter screen plays to try to make something happen mm -hmm. because yeah. he knew that needed that, he knew that against this defense, which a lot of people underestimated, against this Eagles defense, he needed to do something big. Mm -hmm. And and he was throwing that out there. And I think I think that's indicative of a, a very smart, intelligently minded offensive coordinator. 
does he work as a head coach? Well, well, in some certain in, in some instances, yes, because he he fully knows that he fully knows that that side bit, like just like a director who has evolved from a director of photography would know. He knows the cinematography aspect. He knows the offensive right. coordinator aspect. But does he know the director aspect? Does he? Can he figure out the other side? And the other side of the ball in football is a completely different beast. Yeah. yeah. Which is why, I, I, if I look at the the history of of all of the the coaches that I've seen in the NFL since I've really invested in in like educating myself on this, defensive coordinators are much more suited to be head coach than. Than offensive coordinators, I agree. and unfortunately, mm-hmm. we've seen the o- we've seen the opposite, the opposite in the NFL. The offensive yeah. coordinators typically become the head coach. Yeah, I mean, defense. The offense always knows what they're running, and the, and the defense can only read the formation, and then read the six, eight, ten variations right. that could come from that formation. Right. But it's not as it's not as known um, as what the offense is running because they know what they're running. So it's a reactive. Yes, it's all reactionary. Yeah, and so to be, you know, it's just, so you have to have players that understand offensive formations and can read on the fly, and that's a huge part of being a coach. Is okay. So this is the formation that they're set up in. Here are the variations, however many there are, yeah. um, that they can run, and these are the things you look for. These tiny, teeny, tiny little clues. Um, that can clue you in and narrow that down and then you can read it further but i mean defensive coordinators have have to have as much knowledge as the offense as they do the defense right. and it's not so much so for right. the offense exactly yeah i guess i guess if i if i were to try to sum it up um like really simplistically it it really comes down to as an offensive player if you're a, if you're a lineman or if you're a receiver you're running back. You know what your goal is, right? Right. Mm-hmm. You know that my if if the quarterback calls this play, I've got one of two things that I need to take care of. Yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. My my goal is to take care of the defensive tackle and then move on to the linebacker for a run play. If I'm a, an offensive lineman, um, I know my first and second goal, right? As as a defensive player, you have to function as a quarterback. You have to have checkdowns. You have mm-hmm. to know. What your next your next step is, and you have to know what the next step after that is. You have to know what the next step after that is. You need to know that if they audible, I've got now six new possibilities as opposed right. to the four that I just saw. And then and then if that audible happens, and the running back shifts two feet to the right, I've now got seven possibilities I need to take care of. Yeah, and that all and that happens in, in, a, right. in a, just in the span instant. of a couple seconds. Yeah, the, the time clock, the play clock. That's yeah, it. I mean, it's, it. Yeah. yeah. The offense knows they're running from a script. The defense is constantly trying to react to what that script is. And I agree. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I, I agree with everybody here that defensive coordinators tend to make better head coaches. And they're so valuable. They have to know the offense and how to react to an offense just as mm-hmm. well as running the defense. And, because that's what the defense really yeah, is. Right. It's all reacting to yeah. the offense of the opposing team. And I, th- I, um, I, I think that a, a person who understands the defense really well c- can make better offensive calls because they know when they're setting up a certain way how the defense is going to respond, how they're going to try and read right. that. Right. And I don't, you know, offensive coordinators, they don't, they're more worried about the execution and does this team play zone sure. or not, or do they play man to man? Yeah. And but yeah, we could be totally off base. And if we are, hands yeah, the please. Below yeah, for stuff. sure. But that's, I, I mean, that's my understanding of football. Yeah. I think it's a collective understanding that, <clears throat> And no, no slight against them, but the role of the offensive coordinator is, by design, more of a myopic view than the, the defensive coordinator. Yeah, and I think I think when when you have a really successful offensive mind as head coach, they have a defensive coordinator that they really trust and sure. that really understands mm-hmm. and can clue in the offense. Also, you see that you see that with elite teams is that there's a separation on the on the sideline of the offensive defensive and head coaches mm-hmm. they're all doing their things they're communicating they know what's going on but they're they, they're handling their own thing yeah you know? there's a lot of and, trust and in i think that you can see too. there is there is and, and i think you can see with uh some of the 
I, I guess more amateurish teams teams they 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 have the situation where the head coach and the offensive coordinator are right next to each other and they're talking the whole time mm-hmm. because they 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 feel like they need to have that person to person talk because they know football they understand it um, they know it's going to work against this specific front that they're seeing but right. they need to they need to know how to manipulate that right. yeah and on a, a truly great offensive coordinator will understand as a director of photography will know what needs to happen for the shot they need they know the lighting they know they know the focal length of the lens they're using and they're the shot that they're going to take exactly, yeah exactly and that and like you see it a lot in college football the, um i think even more than you see it in professional football where head coaches or coordinators will follow the person that they were working with from another school mm-hmm. and it might be a year or two separation but um but when you have chemistry with somebody, when your head coach and your offensive coordinator, whomever, they really connect, um, and they're like mine, and they have a like, they have a similar philosophy and approach, yeah. that that translates really well. Um, I don't see that so much in, in in professional football, which is interesting to me. Right. Um, it's kind of a like a free for all. You kind of grab what you can get. Um, which the situation in Indy, I'm really intrigued to see what happens now because you have all these assistant coaches that signed up to coach under a particular head coach. Mm-hmm. And now the head coach is not going to be there anymore. That sucks. Um, and so, you know, the, uh, those contracts are going to be honored. And that could be a blessing or a curse, depending on who ends up as the head coach in Indy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I... I Assuming that McDaniels made really good choices with the staff, the head coach that steps in could be supported by a great supporting cast. Right. Or it could be completely disjointed yeah. and they could be without Andrew Luck for another season because they really don't know and we could be looking at another disastrous season for the Colts like we saw last season. Yeah. Oh, we don't know. So, so a question I have. Um, so for Philly fans, you have Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. Who I mean, his his injury was intense and severe. Right. So when he will come back, we don't know if it's at the start of the next season. I suspect it probably won't be. Um, I think it might be kind of a mid season. They Resurgence. bring him in. Yeah, exactly. Right. So w- what do you do with Nick Foles? Do you trade him, and or do you keep him? Because you don't know when Carson Wentz is coming back. Okay, let's let's end this video um, with this discussion because I think it's a great way to end it. Uh, predictions for what's going to happen with the two teams yeah. that just that just won the Super part Bowl. in the Super Bowl. Yeah, or so, just took part. Because yeah. there's a lot of controversy surrounding both the Patriots and the Eagles right now, and what's going to happen? What's going to happen with them next season and seasons going forward? So let's start with a question about Carson Wentz and uh, and Nick Foles. Like, what happens with the inevitable quarterback controversy? That they're going to be saddled with, you know, yeah. come this off season and come into like training camp and OTAs. Yeah, so. I, I don't I mean, think. Yeah, I think we could talk about quarterbacks for three or four videos, but sure, for sure, we'll probably boil that down to one. But, I'm uh, going to throw it out there. I think Wentz is their starter as soon as he's ready to go. Yeah, I, I think I think yeah. Philly should leverage Nick Foles. I think so too. And I think this would be an absolute because, perfect opportunity yeah. to sell high for it. Correct. Trade. Um, and I think I think his high price is still going to be lower than a lot of other places. Yeah. Uh, or a lot of other players. Maybe lower than Kirk Cousins. Um. Oh, for sure. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Um. Nick Foles' span in the NFL, I think, is is limited. Um. Yeah. He's been in it a while. Um. And he, you know, yeah, he has clear talent. He's very talented. He also was backed up by a really phenomenal team. And a really good coaching staff. Correct. And so I think, you know, I don't know how much plug and play happens with Nick Foles. Yeah. Um, I think for the right offense that that works. Um, Would I be upset if he, like, came to Arizona for a couple of seasons? No, I wouldn't. Um, That's a good question to ask. So let's say... Arizona makes Nick Foles an offer because they desperately need a quarterback. Right. And they're too far back in the draft to actually draft a viable option. Yeah, and they're not going to trade up because they don't. Sure. Do you think Nick Foles is a viable yeah, quarterback I solution do. for Arizona, given Mike McCoy being the offensive coordinator? I do. And considering that, would you rather have 
Sam Bradford? Would you rather have Teddy Bridgewater? Would you rather have any number? Sam Bradford of can't stay healthy. Well, uh, that's yeah. okay. Uh, you guys, you get, you gave me just now your gut reaction, but I think that's a consideration that a lot of fans need to make. Of course. Like, am I going to be okay so with for Arizona whoever fans, Arizona fans? But they don't. <laughs> but I, it's it's something <laughs> it's something that that I think a lot of people need to consider. Minnesota has a lot of people to play with. I think they a do. lot of teams in the NFL right now, quarterbacks wise, have have something to consider is that yeah. we saw this year i think more than anything else and this might be my like year end cap statement is that we saw backup quarterbacks step up and show talent and show some yeah. sort of kind of gumption for being in the league yeah, and, yeah. and i think the year i think a quarterback and i think that's it a is perfect it's totally true of, of the 2017 18 season yeah Absolutely. i agree so I wanna I wanna know what's gonna happen in the off season with all those quarterbacks because it's gonna be a mix up and next year is gonna be so exciting in the not necessarily I mean not necessarily the preseason but yeah the preseason because we're yeah, gonna see you're gonna yeah. see a lot you're gonna see the coaches well, think are, they're gonna test already. stuff out yeah uh huh let's move on to the Patriots and wrap this up this yeah week. yeah so there's a lot of rumors going around that this might be Belichick Gronkowski and Brady's last Super Bowl and they might all just retire in one go. I think that's BS. I think Belichick and Brady both have a few more seasons left of them. I think, if anything, Gronkowski is going to retire before the two of them. The kid is deceptively smart. He saved all oh, of his God. money. The only money he spent is from his endorsements and whatnot. Um, he's also somebody who's... If I had to weigh and measure Gronkowski, he's somebody who is not... His life is not permanently ingrained into football like somebody like Tom Brady. I feel like... Gronk is so naturally talented and he has so much fun with it because it just comes naturally. I feel like he's somebody who could more easily walk away from the game and go live a big happy life and just party the rest of his days as opposed to somebody like Tom Brady, even though he has a, a super wealthy, you know, supermodel wife and he's got a family. I feel yeah, like and he's built his own version. Of, I mean, he's he's wealthy in his own right. Well, yeah, but I feel like Tom Brady's life is more dependent on football than Gronk's life is. Yeah. And I feel like Gronk is going to be the guy who's, for as big and tough as he is, he's not terribly durable. He's very injury prone. Yeah. I think he's somebody who's smart enough who's going to say, I've saved all my money. I've won these Super Bowls. I've had this great time in New England. I'm just going to walk away while I've still got my faculties and I've still got my physical abilities and everything's good. And I'm just going to go live it up and just live a huge, massive life of a legend and just bang a bunch of girls and, and drive speed no boats and run yeah. 5Ks and do the, the, like, just do whatever the hell he wants, basically, with his life and not be hindered by any future injuries or let his career be dictated by an injury or his just inability to even play anymore. I don't think he's going to allow himself to be somebody who's going to be burnt out on the sport before he's ready to walk away. I mean, he's he's battered, beaten, and bruised. Right. Um and of the three that you mentioned, I'd be I'd be honestly quite surprised if he continues for another season. I think he's going to seriously consider. And if it is for another season, I think it will be a season. He's already talking about quitting and acting. So I think the gears are already turning for him to be the first yeah. of those big three in New England to start. But I think away. I think Tom Brady and Bill Belichick will. Um, it's going to be a Carson Palmer BA situation they, where they, they both will go at they the will same go time. at the same time yeah. and they will stay as long as it behooves them and they think that they can actually play a Agreed. decent game. Um, but so I think the lifespan. I mean, Tom Brady's forty. Yeah. So I think the lifespan on that career is maybe another two, three years max. Let's say let's say three years tops. Because I don't. He's not going to forty five. No. There's no way. No, absolutely not. He's yeah, not I, he's not going to forty four. If he goes to 43, I'd honestly be surprised. Yeah. So, um, so New England fans prep for... Yeah, get ready for it. Yeah. It's going to sting, but... Whatever, you got five rings. Uh, they, all New England fans have been thinking the same thing. Yeah, like Jerry and they should. It's like, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Well, my God, well, you guys. Uh, the season, it's over. I'm already ready for the off season. I'm, I'm excited for the combine and free agency and yeah. the draft. I love that shit. I love that shit the almost draft as much as I do the regular season. Like I'm a total yeah. nerd about. It's a setup. Yeah, yeah, for I sure. I love watching Same. these teams take shape and whatnot. So yeah, we're definitely gonna cover that. And of course, oh, yeah. we're talking a bunch of, about a bunch of other stuff as well. PHS, an amazing podcast. 
called Not uh, Neatly on the Rocks. Yeah. Uh, you're on what? Your third episode? Yeah, I'll be, be um, I'll soon. be dropping my third episode probably tomorrow. It's fantastic. Um, it's an interview with two of my Check dear out. friends that I was on a curling team with. Um, we just talk whiskey and sports, and it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here in the second draft. Yeah, uh, you guys since, are doing some pretty great stuff. Yeah, so since yeah. the season's kind of dwindling down, we're kind of focusing more on videos and pop culture and beer and whatnot. Uh, up to this point, we have not asked people to like and subscribe, and I just feel like that's heavy-handed and, and no, desperate. No, do it. But if you're watching these videos and you like what we've got going on here, Please. you're likely to not have the videos be recommended for you going forward because they're not going to be football-centric until like the draft comes up and you know the combine comes up. So if you're digging it, because we're digging it, we're digging having you guys watching. Yeah, for sure. Subscribe, just so you know what we're up to. Yeah, and follow us on Twitter. But we really do appreciate you guys sticking with us yeah. this season. Yeah. It's been yeah. a complete blast. Highlight of my week, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, it's good. And we look forward to bringing you guys some really phenomenal football content mm -hmm. moving forward. I'm just looking forward to doing more of these videos, because yeah. I have a blast just doing them every week. Yeah, so. it's just been fun. Yeah, it's yeah. been great. Yeah, so cheers to you guys, and uh, cheers to Alex and Paige, cheers. and uh, yeah. keep an eye out, because we're not stopping, even though the NFL has stopped, so, yeah. Yep. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>